Fires and Magic, Rise of Spider-Man, Chapter 43. The plot's gotten started again! And who knows? Maybe things will look up. Maybe things will look brighter. I mean, hey, the sun's out. Maybe this could be great. Chapter 43, Homecoming. Yes! We're even watching my favorite Spider-Man movie! 15 days remain. Equestria, 32 days remain. Earth. Not that we really care about the time on it. Polly fluttered her eyes open, only to immediately slam them shut. Young hair groaned, pulsing throughout his course to her cranium, making it difficult to process thought. Following her stomach tightened, but Twilight fought back the contents that threatened to rise out of her mouth. The events of the previous night played throughout her mind, adding to the mind grain the mare already bore. Twilight whimpered, Now those three glasses of vodka seem like a horrible idea. Peter had warned her of the side effects of a hangover. Headache, sensitivity to light, urge to throw up badly. Twilight whimpered as he felt all three symptoms simultaneously. Even with her eyes closed, the light violated her eyelids, forcing Twilight to use her hoof as a makeshift shield against its brightness. However, her eyes shot open on a hard realization. She held her hoof inches away from her face, staring widely as a bizarre appearance. Five discs stuck out. Each bending and visiting reacted to her thoughts. Then Thor pulled back and proceeded to show off my appreciation for the story. Twilight snatched her other hoof from under her bedsheets and raised it to her morphed body part, but the mare quickly discovered it shared the same effects, bearing the new five digits. Her mind raced out of control, struggling to take in the fact. Twilight's concentration was discovered, her hooves weren't the only parts of her body that underwent a transformation. The color of her fur was different, no longer violet, but a shade of chocolate brown. Okay. Question. Um, uh, why is it that when some of us make Twilight human, other than the Equestria Girls Twilight, <laughs> we make her more brown than anything else? It's not really important. I'm just curious as to what about Twilight's character says that she's a chocolate brown girl. But then again, should there really be a type of character to say that this person is coated this color? I probably opened up a can of worms, but I don't care. <laughs> Twilight furrowed her brow before writing the base of her unmorphed hoof over her arm. She forced herself to stifle an unhidden skinkle, finding her body soothed, soft, and sensitive. <laughs> hubble, hubble. A hint's pits yelped to keep the mare. She was furless now, too. In her panic, Twilight constantly tossed her bed to the side, exposing her body. Yes! In mustard dismay, the oddities consumed her fully. The lower hills had each had five weird looking toes, like Spike Cat, without clails or claws. Yeah, those toes things are weird. All of her fur was gone, save for a pair of black silk pajamas. Fuck! Darn it! I was hoping for a naked Twilight scene! Darn it! A question of girls I can understand, but you think? You could have had Twilight pop up as a human, naked! Though she was anything but, she felt naked in a sense, and wondered who could have put them on her. It certainly made up for a lack of fur. But Twilight's hose traveled over her head and fear remained that was gone as well. Fortunately, as the mare slid her distance through her hair, clustered at strands, she sighed, appreciative for being granted the mercy of I mean, at least one of her body remaining the same, with it reaching her lower shoulders, yet something was amiss. Twilight brushed her mane back several times, each swipe growing more frantic, but at the lack of discovering a protrusion, the princess felt her heart stop. Her horn was missing too, perspiration formed on her forehead. What an Equestria could have caused so many deformities to surface at once? And as the vodka had altered her mind, uh, the more than she thought. Twilight's gaze fell, landing on the two small lumps that rose over her chest under her shirt. This was too much to take in at once. This is a mutation of sharks. <laughs> she had things growing out of her chest and hooves. Granted, when she felt those things that were growing out of her chest, they didn't feel too bad. 
He felt nice and soft, and, you know, for a girl who was a bee cub, uh, she looked really nice, and they were really nice upon her, and Turksy's got a gun! Anyway! Along with this nice little black lumps that, uh, with that perked on top of them with they were pointed in. Oh! The fur was gone. Horn was missing. She didn't feel anything on her back. It was safe to assume that her wings and tail disappeared as well. This was an hallucination. It was a nightmare. Luckily, in between her legs, part of her fur remained. Play attempted to stand for physics, and but she confused the muscles in her limbs and tumbled over the edge in bed. It's landing on the back of her skull. Was she not buried so deep in the building hysteria? Twilight might have felt some pain. She forced herself to stand, not only to fall flat on her face. Twilight's sense of balance was hardly disrupted, making a walking a tough task in itself. Twilight bit down on her lip. This was the final straw. So much was happening at once. There was only one rational course of action the young girl could take. Twilight screamed at the top of her lungs, No! The door to the door room flew open. A bipedal creature came sprinting inside, quickly approaching the transformed bear. Light raised her hands defensively, unaware of the violent magical energy that emitted from them in her entire body. Stanley! She screamed, eyes flashing with violet light. Energy bolt shot out of her mutated hooves, slammed at the creature, knocking him through a wall. Twilight streaked as the destruction left her wink. Gaze flying to her hands in disbelief. The magic! But how? Without my horn! Twilight? A voice called out for the newly formed hole in the wall. That voice it sounds deeper, but Twilight peeped, eyes widening. She tried her best to stand upright, but her upper body teared to the side, leaving the girl to stumble on the bed. Her sight remained on the hole in the wall. Still, I had no idea what it was that blasted a moment ago, but evident by the relieved smile on her face, she knew who the voice belonged to. Spike, please tell me that's you. What's going on? Yeah, it's me, but... Spike paused, waiting a few seconds before continuing. The way you see me right now, it's complicated, but Peter can explain everything to you. Twilight furrowed her brow at her friend's hesitant tone. Her mind felt a twins of comfort in her mention of her lover's name. Peter's here too? Where is he? Who was that human that ran in here? Is it alright? Right here. Putting Spike back into place, Peter groaned, causing Twilight to lean near the edge of the bed. Her mouth fell a keep once her knight reached a hole in the wall and stepped into the room. It was by hell, furless with skin cone more tanned than Twilight's. However, she recognized his unkempt chocolate brown mane and heels of irises as it drew closer. But before Twilight could question the creature about his identity, he sat down on a free space on the bed and called out to her. I'm sorry, Twilight. I didn't mean you alone. I can't blame you for being scared. So let's curl to a smile. It's me, Twilight. Twilight inhaled sharply placing a hand over the tightening knot in her chest. Like herself, his appearance had changed, but her feelings for Peter remained just- OW! OW! Oh, that part again. Her ears rang with bliss, recognizing the gentle voice of her lover. Though it was clumsy, Twilight managed to wrap her arms around Peter's neck. The young man held his poise, keeping the girl from shifting her balance over the sides of the bed. But with an opening, Peter pressed his lips onto Twilight's. She yelled inside his mouth. Her eyes glazed over as her body melted into the kiss. Questions Twilight had were thrust away, her heart knowing that this was in fact Peer, knight and lover. Yeah, ignore the other big questions, as long as you are got, got your boy toy with you. Peer grinned before grimacing, placing his hand over the bowler back his back. The pack series puts Twilight. I'm just glad Spike managed to calm you down before you knocked me through another wall. The young man chuckled nervously, recoiling as another piece of the wall fell to the floor. Hope Strange has some insurance on the place. Pain flushed Strange Twilight's face. Wait, that was you? She shook her head, sitting her gaze between Pierre and the hole in the wall. Racing out, Twilight placed her hands over Pierre's. Her fingers were stiff, afraid to butts and its. I am so sorry, Pierre. I didn't mean to hurt you. The longer she stared at the wall, the larger it grew in her mind, adding to her heavy rest of guilt. I'm really sorry! Whoa, Twilight, it's fine. You know, I've had worse. Just remind me to never forget your birthday, or our anniversary, Pierre chuckled, turning her wrist so Twilight's hands rested firmly on his palms. He took hold of them, caressing the top of the girl's hands on his thumbs. Twilight's mind grew fuzzy, so he was always susceptible to Pierre's touch. Without fur, Twilight felt her skin tingle more than usual, goosebumps forming over her arms and the areas her lover graced with his touch. 
and he and her face rose as Pierce leaned in closer, until his face was only inches from Twilight. After a moment of silence, the young man pulled back and chuckled, all the while gently squeezing the girl's hands. I was right about one thing. No matter what world I am in, you're the most beautiful thing in it, he sobered, the sand case falling to the ground. This was we came to Earth for a better reason. Earth? Did I? Well, I blurted out, bringing her hands to gaze upon them and the rest of her body, but we're selling a sight express on Pierre. I'm human now, just like you? The girl, Pierre, once Pierre nodded, the girl placed her hand over her eyes, assisted the earth to faint. Pierre took the opportunity to step closer to Twilight, placing his arms around her shoulder, but her gaze remained locked on her extended hand, particularly the distance attached to him. This, how? How did we get here? Twilight clutched Pierre tightly, burying her face in his chest. Why are we here? That's one of life's great mysteries, isn't it? Hey, no red versus blue references. Pierre patted Twilight's shoulders assuringly. Quite a bit has happened since we fell asleep last night. I'm still not completely sure about what's going on. But I can tell you we're in Sancto Sanctorum, home of Dr. Strange. He's the most powerful sorcerer on Earth and a good friend of mine. He's partially responsible for us being here. But Madame Webb's really to blame, I think. Irritation poured from his voice. Clearing his throat, Pierre gave his lover a smile, albeit a very forced one. I wanted to make sure you were awake and fully recovered from your hangover before Strange explains everything to us. As if a late realization crept to his mind, Pierre glanced at a hole in the wall before directing his gaze back to the girl by his side. Okay, you know how the two of us transformed to humans? Pierre scratched the back of his head. Well, Spice changed too, a lot. Well, with any luck, Spike has also turned into a human, granted with the ability to transform, so that way we can have her, her and Twi Spike once again become more brother and sister. Because, granted, I don't mind the whole entire Spike being a dog thing, because I realized why Megan did it. She wanted to continue the Wizard of Oz reference. She wanted to set it up purely for a joke. That is the only... And only reason why Spike was a dog. No, it, it, it wasn't some story reason. Wasn't a plot-based reason. Wasn't a character reason. It was just to set up the gag for and your, your little dog, too. That was the only reason. Megan was setting up a Wizard of Oz reference. Spike was the easy target. That is why. There was no hatred, no malice, no nothing. Just, Spike was there. She wanted to make a human, re a Wizard of Oz reference. Spike was easy. Boom. Mystery solved. Kind of annoying, actually, when you think about it. <laughs> Sorry, person, I was asking for beer. No, at all. Not even close. Oh, fuck me, no. I think you better see him. Standing on the bed, he just went through the hole and peeked outside. Most of his hands to someone. Come on, Spike. Twilight won't bite. I don't know. She blasted you through the wall. No telling what she might do with me, Spike nervously declared. Just don't figure out again, Twilight. Pierre took a step back into the room, chuckling. Hey, you don't annoy her nearly as much as me, so I think you're safe. The entire room fell silent for several seconds before Spike's fatty sigh echoed through the hallway. His body was the size of a large carrot with a long neck and tail, but it was graceful, sinuous, and sleek, with hard shining scales gleaming in the light. Start crying out loud! Look, again, with the question of girls, that was fine. Joke set up, uh, Wizard of Oz reference, boom. I'm perfectly fine with that. There's no excuse here. You can make Spike human. Oh, I would have loved this fic more if it made him human. Or made him a mutant. A mutant with the ability to transform into a dragon. But no! We're stuck with this? The only thing I request now is Spike to meet Lucky. Oh, but no, Spike's remains a dragon. Light purple leathery rings were tied slightly on his black foot spread. Blah, 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 blah. Moving on. The scales were the same color as purple and green, accompanied with a yellow underbelly, but his size was daunting. Once a baby dragon was now standing nearly twice as high as Pierre. His added height came from his longer neck and legs. The trunk of his body was. Oh, who the frack cares? No, 
Really? Who cares about Spike at this point? We obviously don't care about Twilight's friends. Spike hasn't done much at all in this fic. Now we spent a paragraph describing that Spike is a purple dragon? Why do we care? We just don't. Only now, now do we remember Spike exists? Now that I think about it, isn't this the first time we've seen Spike since chapter 20-something? And now you're expecting me to be going, Ooh, look at Spike. Yeah, look at Spike, the worthless character. Hey, part, a lot of Twilight stare at the dragon in amusement. My like, star, Spike, you're huge. Here, stepped over to his soldiers. Tell me about it. The little guy just had the biggest growth spurt in history. Chuckling, he held the dragon's leg. You thought I was being silly when I told you to drink plenty of milk. With close fist over her mouth, Twilight furrowed her brow. But how is this possible? We changed completely, but Spike didn't. Pierre took his place by Twilight's side, wrapped his arm around her shoulder. Strange explained that to me. At first, I thought it was my own web of someone was here. Well, it was actually Dr. Strange who did. He had to create shadow constructs of our body, tie our spirits to them, and allow us to exist. He had to shape our bodies. Our spirits did that. He only assumed we took the form of humans. My eyes widened. He was able to do that? His magic must be very powerful. It sounds like he learn from him. She tilts her head to the side. Wait, if he gave you and me the form of a human, why didn't he do the same for Spike? Peter rates his index finger. I guess you could say that this is an echo of Spike's true self. Or will it grow up to be? Bullshit! Spike stuck his head disapprovingly. Still don't agree with him. I'm gonna be a monster when I grow up. His voice croaked as he raised his claw senses from his face. Oi, 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 Spike! We already have two depressing sad sacks in this fic. We don't need one more! Taking it back, Twilight placed her hand over her chest. Here frowned, both staring at Satin Clay's retire. Twilight spoke up first. Everybody grows up, Spike. You will too. Holding his arms over his chest, Pierre nodded. Yeah, you will grow up. But it's up to you to decide what kind of person you'll become. If you become a monster, it'll be because you want to be. But I know that's not the case with you. Me and Twilight, you may learn to us, but you'll always be our little brother. Spike raised his head, eyes rather moist. Really? Twilight smiled. Of course. You've always been noble, Spike. There's no shame in growing up. You will eventually. But when you do, you'll be the same gentle dragon I know and love. Peter's smile remained intact as he patted the dragon on the top of his head. She's right. Nobody's perfect, little bro. Everybody makes mistakes. You resist temptation every day. The stronger you realize. He grinned, prompting Twilight to do the same. He held the dragon closely. Peter patting the side of his head while Twilight wrapped her arms around his neck in an embrace. You could be proud of you, little bro. Spike nodded, pressing his claw over her face. Peter wrapped his arms around Twilight's shoulder and pulled the girl closer, as if protecting her from the outside world. Though they were nearly the same height in pony form, with only a few instances of difference, Twilight's head came to her Peter's shoulders in her human forms, making the girl rather short in comparison to her lover. She didn't mind his chains. Smiling inwardly, Twilight allowed Peter's warmth to engulf her. The young man grinned, turning his gaze to her ceiling. I know what you're going through, Twilight. It wasn't that long ago when I first turned to a pony. Kissed the girl over the crown of her head, causing her cheeks to burn brightly. She peeked up, staring lovingly into her boyfriend's eyes. He in turn smiled warmly. You helped me dead, I'll do the same for you now. Can I please just shoot myself now? Oh, Peter, you're so sweet. <laughs> I'm gonna do it! Twilight cooed before giving the young man a brief yet affectionate kiss. We're in another world, but you're right here, looking out for me. Where would I be without you? Spike groaned, bringing his claw over his face. You two are going to make me hurl. Suddenly, small traces of energy engulfed every star and stone and rubble on the wall from Pierre and Twilight to Mollus. They levitated from the ground and fled back towards the hole in the wall. The pieces to a jigsaw pieces, muscle, pieces of rubble formed together. Cracks remained. That same energy burned away before dissipating, in turn erasing any evidence of damage. Twilight attempted to stand, only to fall back into the waiting arms of Pierre. Before anyone could react, an individual appeared a few feet from the position of flash of light. Twilight is sitting position with his arms crossed and a crescent key, behind his blue coat. 
man opened his gray eyes and smiled at the trio, rubbing one of his yellow gloved hands through the white strands of his jet black hair. The man laughed lively. <laughs> well, I had a suspicion you would be restless. The last thing I expected was for you to blow a man-sized hole in my home. Hall. In my home. Spike gulped, raised his claw over twice, trying to freight. She did it! Lenny smiled, sheepishly. Here shook his head. No, it's my fault, Doc. I sat down for a moment to grab Twilight some wire. And thinks he will wake up so soon. Tanya scratched on her shoulders. You look at it from her view. You wake up with a hangover and everything's gone wacko jacko. You try acting normally. Oh, this is a tough choice for me doing Dr. Strange. Should I go back to Cumberbatch? Should I do his voice from Superhero Squad, Ultimate Spider-Man? I mean, I would do it from the point of view of Ultimate Dr. Strange, but every mage here hates to, hates Ultimate Strange's guts. He's an insult to the original Dr. Strange! Seriously, this was supposed to be the be true to his roots that the writer so-called proclaimed you were happy to make? Yeah. The Ultimate Universe isn't left here in this studio. I'm going to do it. I'm going to stay with uh, Benedict. What was smart? The man calmly shook his head. The last thing I worry is with Paul breaks out. The mystic arts make the way past quite easy. I'm more surprised your girlfriend was capable of conjuring magic, potent enough to shatter a magically reinforced wall. Here smiled. I'm a carry at heart, but I wasn't joking about Twilight. She was born in a world full of magic, and she's one of the most powerful musics there. I guess you could see Twilight surprising there. Twilight glanced away, a pink flush forming her cheeks. Don't talk like that, Pierre. Ignoring embarrassment, the girl directed her gaze to the man flowing from the ground. I take it you're Dr. Strange? Once he nodded, twice smiled weakly. Pierre told me you know what's going on. Would you please give us an explanation? Why are we on Earth? And how is Mal involved? Webb involved? Pierre asked, irritation evident in his voice. So many questions. Fortunately, I have some answers. Dr. Strange replied, flicking his wrist. The door opened and allowed the man to float outside. Follow me to the lobby. All will be explained soon enough. Osborne's blank, yellow eyes shot open. Hard screen forms sat in a stone in the midst of a room. Others were present, remaining silent out of fear and respect to the self proclaimed god. A wicked fang smile formed on the goblin's face. Ah, there you are, Parker. Turned to the sides, the individual appeared in bright flash of light. Her skin was fair, and her hair, which came down to her shoulders, was a perfect mixture of crimson and yellow streaks. She wore a simple black leather jacket over a violet skirt, an insignia of a sun placed over her chest, and matching orange skirt with a violet streak on her side. The black boots matched her entire attire, bearing a violet flame from toe, and the crown of her head was golden, beautiful violet stem placed at a stair. Sending her hand, she offered him a small crystal heart. Here's our friend, as you requested. Shall I see free him? The goblet took her heart into his hand. Smiling at the crimson irises glared at him intently within the gem. Not quite right. We won't let him get his exercise. Bright sighted and eyes widened, darkening to a seat of black momentarily. Master, is it time for us to begin our takeover then? Osborne nodded. Yes, like a moth to the flame, Spider Man came to retrieve the crown of his princess. How noble. Yet, so foolish. From his seat, he turned to the countless followers, baby in the shadows. Now we shall drive him out of hiding. Sunset Shimmer, prepare our forces. The small room with. We will attack the shield helicarrier tomorrow night. It is time the world feels the wrath of God. Dr. Strange had only gone over a few of the details. Pierre sat with his head lowered and fingers clenched in his unkempt hair. Twilight placed her hand over his knee. Even a reinserting squeeze with still unfamiliar fingers. Pierce shook his head, attempting to accept the truth. It was difficult, even for one who participated in unbelievable feats frequently. I can't believe it. Four years, he murmured, placing his hands over Twilight's. I've been in Equestria for about three months. 
How did that much time pass? Peter, you make plenty of pop culture references, and you don't know Narnia time! Quiet frown, eyes filled with empathy. I guess time goes by faster in this mission. Four years seems like a lot, but it could be a lot worse. Think about what it would be like if it was 400 years. At least most of the punk, uh, people you care about should still be around, right? I hope so. Peter murmured, his voice chanting near silence for ages. Strange nine. You are quite perceptive, my dear. I sensed a magical anomaly a week ago, but it disappeared before I could hope to trace it. That same day, Madame Webb helped me telepathically and informed me of the situation. She knew of the thief's identity and our accomplice. The good Madame also told me of your whereabouts, Spider. The sorcerer man smiled. This entire time, the world believed you had given up and required tired. Others, including myself, thought you had been killed. It pleases me to learn that neither accusation was true. You were summoned to a different dimension and made quite a name for yourself. A knight to a beautiful princess. It truly really worked well for you. But tell me, doesn't this seem out of character for you to be labeled as a powerful knight of whatever? Yeah, it kinda does. In a few moments, Peter Mance returned strange to smile with one of his own. Yeah, I'm lucky to have met Twilight. She's easily the best thing I've ever met in my life. Tiny grip on her hand, and to the genuine what the girl, or the girl felt. Peter's smile faded soon with a stern look on his face. Strange, the reason why Big God is because Madame Webb gave Twilight a spell book to summon me here. She knows what's going on, but refuses to tell me anything. The whole time I thought I was stuck in Equestria. Did she pull him back, or was it you? I'm sorry. The good madame was cryptic and only provided some answers. Strange nine, shaking his head, Pierce story, typical. Strange inhaled deeply before releasing his breath. Why was the summon here back to Earth? It was per Madame Webb's request. The sorcerer extended his hand and glowed with energy. In response, Pierce by emitted a bright yellow glow. The incantation Madame Webb performed on you. A binding spell. Once Miss Twilight performed the summoning spell, your body and essence attached themselves to Twilight's spirit. In a turn, a piece of her spirit formed with you, and the connection was simplified. Strange lowered his hands, and the gold around Pierre disappeared. Simple put, you are forever bound to remain in Equestria as long as Twilight's spirit remains there. I sense she has very powerful connections to several individuals in that world. The same applies to you as well, Spider Man. If you were to try to leave on your own, your body and spirit would immediately dissipate and return to Equestria. The only way I managed to put you here was to fuse a temporary counter spell with your magical essence and keep you teleporting back prematurely. And boom! That officially has raked every single law of dimensional travel ever in existence. Thank you, Fick! Now you're just making an excuse to say that that's why Pyrrha has to remain in Equestria. That may sound like a good plot, but I can see only in your eyes that right now that is just a load of BULL SHIT! God, I hate it when people mess up dimensional travel! Twilight burrowed her brow. Connections? You must mean the bond I share with my friends. The other bearers of the Elements of Harmony. Wait a minute, Twilight. You remember them? You remember that they're on equal terms with you? Oh my gosh, I c thought that you completely ignored them. I mean, hell, you've been ignoring them for the past few chapters. Hell, you went even so far as to insult them by putting them lower than you on the balcony. Remember, Twilight? Remember that whole coronation scene? Yeah, you were up there on the balcony. They were down there. You were up there. They were down here. You... Basically told them to fuck off because as far as you were concerned, you were more powerful than they were. But you still see them as your friends? Well then, why haven't they followed you? Why haven't they been with you? Why haven't you done anything together? The real Twilight? Yeah. She has a powerful connection with her friends. You don't, little miss bitch. You hold a power similar to mine. It connected to me through the most powerful artifacts on the planet. When we were together, we could use the power of the Elements of Harmony. Wow, I'm surprised you remembered that. A great magic that could drive away evil. She smiled. We've been connected with since we were Phillies. Without them, 
wouldn't be where that I am now. Yeah, you so totally show that during the coronation, Twilight. I so believe you. Strange pressed his hand over his goatee. That certainly answers my questions. Since Peter has formed an inseparable bond for you, your fates are forever linked. The older man cleared his throat. <clears throat> anyway, I must warn you. That spell will only last as long as the mental gate between Earth and Equestria remains open. Should it close and you'll not return within 32 days, the bonds tethering you to Equestria that are keeping you alive will be severed, and you will fade from existence. Despite Gloria's massive head and forward accounts, distance is from the couple. Wait, so Peter will disappear forever if we don't find the crown in time? Strange nodded. Yes, you will. But if time draws too close, I will send him back before he can disappear. Peter folded his arms. So I am stuck in Equestria? A few months ago, Webb was seriously ticked he did something like that without my consent. I can't really get mad at Madame Webb, not when I have Twilight and the others in my life now. He leaned forward in his seat. It still doesn't excuse what she's doing. It's like she's my puppeteer and always pulling my strings. Exhaling, Peter knew he was going in circles and waved his hand impassively. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's focus on getting Twilight's crown back. It's very important to Equestria. It wouldn't bode well if we failed to get back. Using her magic. Wait, why do we care? We got Peter Parker. Yeah, Vic. You've kind of thrown away all importance of the elements of harmony when you've basically just said Peter can do anything. I held a small glass of soul water in midair. It's not quite ready to use her fingers yet. Fortunately, her magic capabilities and mechanics remain the same. Through concentration and willpower, Violet took a sip out of her glass. The fingers twitched, sending a wave of energy out. The glass teared over and poured its contents onto a girl's face and upper body. Soaking the silk pasama shirt, she swore. Woohoo! What girl party? Exasperated, Twilight whined as he blankly stared at the distance on her hands. Feels like I have tentacles in my hooves. I see enough hentai to know where this is out! Peter snickered before Twilight's open palms slammed on the back of his head. Strange furious his brows, Twilight aimed to strike Peter a second time. I see that has a chance to bet you, Spider-Man. My sympathies, Miss Twilight. Twilight tuned out Spike's laughter long enough to refer her gaze to the sorcerer. We're wasting time. Please, Dr. Strange. Madame Webb told you who stole my crown? Her eyes white was Peter offered a dry cloth. Twilight accepted a gift with a smile. Despite her lover's annoying tendencies, he knew just how to spoon the girl without even trying. Shaking her head, Twilight shifted her attention back to Strange. I wear her free hand instinctively found his way back to Peter's short, warm, and gentle grip. What's their name? Who are they working for? Gathering his thoughts, Strange took a moment to answer. Sunset Similar. I'm not that familiar with her, but I've heard of her master. She's working for Norman Osborne, the Green Goblin. Sunset Shimmer. Plant murmured, brow furrowing before her eyes shot open, realized he's in. Wait, I know that name! Sunset Simmer was Princess Celestia's former apprentice before she accepted me as her student. You got that little bit of explanation out of the way. Peter rests his hand in his palm. He said former. Did something happen between Simmer and Celestia? Now she graduated perfectly fine. What do you think? Sly turned to pet Spike, a tiny hand caressing the crown of the dragon while pointing to Spike scattered about. I was only a filly, and Spike was just a hatchling when I became Celestia's pupil. No pony. I mean, nobody really talked about Shimmer. I heard rumors from the professors at Canterlot School for gifted unicorns. She placed her hand over her knees, causing it to silk until it wrinkled. Sunset was very gifted, but said to be quite powerful. But she was aggressive, arrogant, and confrontational. From what I heard, she and Celestia argued a lot. Spike tapped his claw against the hardwood floor, scratching away the polished surface with ease. This might be Sunset Shimmer's way of getting back at Celestia. Maybe. Twilight hesitantly muttered, raising one hand defensively. But Osborne does have Discord's powers. He could be using his powers to influence and control Sunset Shimmer. This might explain why Sunset was able to leap across dimensions like this. Discord was able to do so in a weakened state. This means Osborne has proper power control over Discord's powers. Gee, maybe we should have done the smart thing and focused on trying to get into the human world and stop him before he came over! Doesn't make sense though. If he used that ability, why didn't he come to Equestria himself? Miss Gordon made it clear Osborne wants me dead. Running a hand through his unkempt hair, Pierre crumbled. But his expression brightened, so his mind came across a logical solution. 
unless he couldn't make it fully to leave himself. With this course spirit that traveled from Equestria to Earth, spirits are able to leap across dimensions a lot easier than physical bodies. That wouldn't stop him from doing what Twilight did, summon someone. Tossing his head, Spike stared at the couple. What are you getting at? Twilight stared at Glass of Pierre before continuing to face Spike. There are several possibilities, but a couple of theories came to mind. First, Osborne could have met with Sunset Simmer and made a bargain with her to lure Pierre away from Equestria. She stole my crown and we came right after her. She shrugged to her head. Second, Osborne could have possessed Simmer and made her steal the crown against her will. Under his influence, she wouldn't know what she was doing. It probably allowed Osborne to perform a summoning spell on Simmer. There are only theories, but Pierre placed his hand over Twilight's shoulder. They're both pretty solid theories. We won't know anything for sure until we find Osborne or Shimmer. The trio shared a nod with each before Pierre forced himself back to a vertical base and faced the sorcerer. So, Duck, you have an idea where those two could be? Sadly, I do not. No one has heard from Norman Osborne for three years after he attacked several of his cohorts. I assume he's hiding in a bunker with magical and radio frequency shielding. They're explaining why no one has been able to pick up on his movements. Strange replied, not taking his eyes off of the young man. Before the group could accept a temporary defeat, the sorcerer held out his hand, allowing his magical energy to take the form of a violet orb over his palm. Do not, my friends. From what I gather, the crown which you seek has the exact same magical signature as Twilight's spirit. For some time, I could create a tracking spell, but I'm afraid Twilight will be the only one who can use it. I placed a hand on her arm, smiling. You can really do that? I'm Dr. Strange, I'm awesome. Strange smirked, I'm attaining the orb from his presented over to the young girl. It is a small feat for the sorcerer of Supreme Might. Guarantee fade, trailing to Twilight's body. At the words he gazed towards Pierre. Normal circumstances, this will only take seconds or minutes. I don't see it's being expended, keeping the portal between Earth and Equestria all open. I'm required to rest for a few hours. I can guarantee the spell will be ready for tomorrow night. Are you fine with this, Spider-Man? Pierre nodded, giving the sorcerer a thumbs-up approval. That's perfect. You'll give Twilight Spike some time to get used to the new bodies. Placing his hands on his hips, the young man huffed outwardly. Plus, all our stuff is back in Equestria. I'll have to make a new pair of web shears while we wait for you to complete that tracking spell. Saints of Iris is fighting to blame realization. Hey, Doc, I need another favor. Strength voices for the son is of the quest. What is it? Pierre offers hand to Twilight, who politely said to the quest, sir. Twilight's a fast lure, and I have a feeling she'll be out on the front line with me. Think you could have a costume ready for her by tomorrow night? She'll need something to look heroic. Modern web was already considered that. Strange countered, causing Pierre to sue a bemused glare. She already has her costume ready. Her web suit is recreated and sent here. She was also kind enough to give Miss Twilight a proper heroic attire. Both in your quarters upstairs. Just try not to destroy another wall in my home if you can help it. Closing his eyes, Sorain solidified his focus and resumed his meditation. Eyes by a glow of a royal blue aura. Now make yourselves at home. Need me to my work. Should you need my assistance, do not hesitate to call me. Oh, Clea, I have missed you. Pierre sighs, he gently pulled Twilight to your feet. So what now? I saw a glance at the open door, leaning to their quarters before a violet gains their night. Let's go upstairs. There's a lot we need to talk about. No! Please! Let's just get to the costumes already! Taking her advice to heart, Pierre lifted the girl into a slender yet powerful arms and held her bridal style. Mine grew and fuzzy at the thought being handled so gently. Twilight shook her head, recollecting her nerve as she stared at her magically grown dragon. Only she could hide her bus as well. Spike, I need you to do something for me. I'd rather have Pierre write a letter. I want you to send it to Celestia, okay? Somebody distracts Pierre races for the girl. We're in her dimension. Do you think Spike could still do that? It's worth a try, Twilight innocently retorted, placing a hand over her chest. I'm sure I would like to know where we are. If she didn't, it would raise a panic. I also think she needs to know what's become a Sunset Simmer. You're right. We'll work out. In the meantime, we'll have to teach you the proper human etiquette. Parker said it. Making his way upstairs. Speaking of which, since you're going to become a superhero one soon, you need a new cast race, like something Pollen Power or Equestria Girl. I only have a phrase in mind. Or, so I said, before clocking Pierre on the side of her head, or it crushed out for her effort. So I rolled her eyes and blankly her annoying lover. Shut up! Unless this were going well, 
Five found a way to prevent the of walking without falling on her face too often. She was a natural born klutz. But the girl managed to learn how to jog and sprint as well. Complete chore in comparison to a four hoof gallop. And he gave her fast intellect, everything else went smoothly for Twilight. She learned to drop pony from where it such as any, every, and some, placing body and one in the same place. Plus, he had occasional slip ups, as like Peter had to this very day. To remain in Sanctus Sanctorum, not wanting to go into the outside world until Pierre felt Twilight was ready. The last thing he wanted to do was start a panic with the populace. The people of Earth weren't nearly as open minded or accepting as beings of Equestria. There was a chance he could make Saint Twilight for a mutant, since he accidentally used her powers in public. Much like being a prodigy and genius, Twilight learned how to use and control her magic effectively within a 24 hour span, though staying up for a majority of the night helped that case for the young girl. Understandably, there were still questions Twilight had about humans, one being their needs for clothes. Without fur, humans were more susceptible to heat and cold. However, for Pierre, he stressed that clothing was there to keep looking decent, as humans had more to hide, in a sense. To be frank, Pierre was very specific in his instruction. Guys and girls, the ones who were heterosexual, were only naked for their special mate for certain occasions behind closed doors. Wait, 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 wait. The ones who were heterosexual were only naked for their special mate for certain occasions behind closed doors. Are you saying that homosexuals are naked all the time? You're probably not, but language, language. Needless to say, Twilight understood that perfectly, considering the state's her relationship that Pierre blossomed into. Luckily, she found a lovely set of clothing in her closet. See, Madame Webb had a good idea what she would like. Road costuming included. She sat with a violet skirt and a black pair of leggings that posed her lower thighs. A dark blue vest was placed over a white cotton, long sleeved shirt, wore a pair of thick black boots over her feet. I was quick to admit how cumbersome it felt to wear such clothing, including strange things called bras and panties. Twilight smiled literally. On her own, learning about the human world would have been challenging, but she had an excellent teacher and cold friend, or rather boyfriend. Pierre was patient. Willing to answer every question Twilight had, as he had plenty to ask out of natural and scientific curiosity. There was a saying in Equestria, to understand some pony, you must have walked a mile in their shoes. Now she was starting to see what Pierre went through a few months back, trying to understand the techniques and methods that came naturally to herself. She was able to appreciate the young man for what he was doing on a personal level. The spike slipped in the back of the lobby, taking up the majority of the room, placed out on the couch, painting a map of New York's many tourist attractions. She saw glances of Pierre out of the corner of her violet irises. She stood by the window with his arms crossed as summer expressed his hazel eyes. Why placed her booklet down on the table before forcing herself to a standing position? Pierre, what's wrong? Pierre's eyes widened into a girl's soft voice. His attire was simple, being a blue short sleeved shirt with a oral long sleeve atop accompanied by a pair of beige pants and black tennis shoes. Scratching the back of his head, Pierre chuckled, Oh, nothing. I'm just... Hoping that uh, I was right and that we could continue with the plot? Turned off, sitting his glass out the window. Twilight quietly made his way to her side, wrapping her slim arms around one of the slender limbs she was in range. Her hand found his own, and their fingers linked distinctly. He stood in comfortable silence, with Pierre gathering his thoughts while Twilight patiently waited for him to talk with her. Sighing, he conceded, turning his head to pizza's lover with a peculiar smile on his face. I hate to sound selfish, but I'm worried about Aunt May. It's been four years. I wonder if she's still living. He whispered, forcing the lump to his throat down while swallow. I just hope she's still alive, period. Never had a chance to tell her the truth about what I really am. Never even had a chance to say goodbye, I just... How's that selfish? So I strongly questioned, causing Pierre to recall him voluntarily. He turned his head away, avoiding the sculpted glare of Twilight in the girl Angel's direction. But I dissipated with a soft smile formed on her face. You have every right to worry. Your aunt is the closest thing you have to a mother. It's really sweet how much you care. This caused Pierre to laugh, promptly Twilight to wind her grip on his arm. You have plenty of time. You should go out and find her. I'm sure she's just as worried about you as you are for her. Pierre's expression softened and gazed at Twilight's. Are you sure? She managed to nod before the young man lowered his head as his lips against hers, parting to after a kiss on her forehead. I love you so much, he whispered, causing Twilight to shudder with content. Eyes whitened and his smile grew, a sense of giddiness taking hold. 
Hey, if I can find out May, you could come with me. I really want you to meet her. Fine, giggled. I'm flattered, Peter. But do you think I'm ready to interact with humans? He grinned. You're pretty normal to me. You are a total klutz. Despite his painful jab, Twine's smile remained intact long after the pink blush painted her cheeks. However, before the pair could continue to savor the moment, Dr. Strange appeared in the midst of the room with a bright flash of light. Now intensely waking Spike up in the process. The dragon let out a low yawn as he forced himself to the floor. Spike rushed over to the sorcerer's position, prompting Pierre to follow her lead. Once he was in her reins, Strange reared down and placed his fingers against the girl's forehead, enchanting an incantation, causing Twilight's eyes to glow brightly before returning to normal. The talking spell is complete, but I'm afraid that's all the good news I have to offer, Strange declared, holding out his hand. A small orb formed of his palm, and an image formed within of an aerial vessel taking fire from multiple flying objects. Large clouds of smoke rose from the airship, and flames spread over the top. Colonel Fury just sent out a priority alert to all metahumans. Osborne just launched an attack on the shield helicarrier. An army of robots and villains are there, tearing the ship apart. Gritting his teeth, Pierre growled on his breath. Crud! Osborne's praying fairly bold if he's attacking the shield helicarrier like this. Strange raised his hand. Even if that is the case, there's no sighting of the Green Goblin aboard the helicarrier. You had to do various radio feed, that's about it. I managed to hear through a radio transmission that a young, red-headed girl wearing a crown is leading your forces. I believe this is the girl you three are seeking. My eyes shot open and dimension of crown. It does! We should head over and stop her from causing any further damage! Inhaling deeply, the girl closed her eyes before turning around and pointing skyward. It's me. I can sense my crown in that direction. Opening her eyes, Twilight jogged upstairs. It was stumbling away. I'll go put on my costume. Pierre looked at his shirt, revealing a Spider-Man costume underneath. He paused, sharing a look with the sorcerer. How much backup does S.H.I.E.L.D. have? Are you going to teleport us there? The image in the orb faded, breaking up one of the four individuals battling their way through the hordes of Osborne's soldiers. One man in a suit of red and yellow armor flew above, plastic enemies with beams of energy from his hands. A tall, blonde man fell, followed, raising his hammer high over his head. When he fell from the sky at the beck and call, disintegrating all robots in his path. A robot approached a sort of gruff male from behind, only to be sliced apart once he got too close. Okay, so I feel good. <laughs> Snarling, he lunged through the air and knocked another robot to the ground before impaling it was several times when the metallic claws arose from his knuckles. Across their position, a red and blue seal of, of a star in the center soared through the vicinity before decapitating a pair of robots. The shield bounced off the wall, while a fourth man, guarded in red, white, and blue, placed it over his arm. They continued to fight their way through the gathering crowds as they traveled to the helicarrier, but the image of the battle faded from the orb before he could begin to release his conclusion. Wait a minute, that's the opening to Mar Marvel Ultimate Alliance! Iron Man Thor. Both of me and Captain America have a good handle on the situation. It would be best if you found Sunset Simmer before they did. You could accidentally destroy or dominate the, uh, the crown otherwise. Strange stayed, pausing to wipe the sweat from his brow. Holding out his hand, the sorcerer remembered another incantation. He turned, creating a small jade orb over his palm. Snapping his fingers, the ball of air as he flew over his fight's forehead and seeped it to his forehead. There's no time to waste. I lack the energy to teleport you three to the helicarrier, but I managed to embed the knowledge of flight to spike spirit. Trust us instincts and follow Twilight's guidance. That way, you three should have no problem finding the helicarrier. Pierce stole a glance at Spike. Francis placed the thought of flight. He chuckled nervously at Strange. Alright, Doc, I trust you on this. Let's hope we don't make a big career in the ground. Some more clothes are swiftly discarded and thrown off to the side. Pierre placed his mask over his head. But before he would fold it over his face, he directed his hazel guys towards the coast door upstairs. Twilight, double time! Let's go! First, the purple energy erupted a few feet away, forcing Pierre and Spike to slam their eyes shut at the right flash of light. He dissipated, revealing Twilight in her heroic attire. It was a fairy light scene of Violet with some persistence that the girl could have mistaken for the color white of the entering eye. A hood was placed over the girl's head, and yet it wasn't attractive. Lying several strands of violet pink hair to drape free over her shoulders and breasts. Her arms and hands were shielded by a pair of large gloves, leaving only her fingertips and shoulders exposed. 
Leotard hugged her body so tightly, quite revealing, leaving her stomach, cleavage, and upper thighs uncovered. Her boots had a similar design to her gloves, coming up to the mid sixes of her thighs. Insignia, a twilight's cutie mark, a violet star sat above her chest, and below her neck, two others placed on the left side of her leggings. The case she wore, that was a tassel hood, draped over her shoulders and came down to her calves. I pulled her hood back, cheeks burning as he found Peter's white eye expression. She pressed the side of her arm. Feels silly wearing this. Does it look okay, Peter? Spice grew wide. Well, Twilight, don't know about human fashion, but I think Rarity would go nuts over that costume. Strange her start. Small than okay, my Twilight. Look at Stoffigant. Call me right up. Here's how I clatter and stores over what's Twilight bust variously. Back off, Gandalf! You look amazing, but... He stammered. I was stepping forward to poke Twilight's exposed stomach. You forgot your spandex. It's gonna be very cold where we're going. The spandex will help shield you from the winds. She poked her stomach again, earning a giggle in return. Plus, it's magically reinforced and bulletproof. It'll give you more protection. Take your time to go put it on. I don't want your tummy to have a bullseye on it. I want to make a ref comment and joke about superhero costumes, but I don't have the time. Twilight smiled, appreciating her lover's concern. Disappearing in a flash of light, she went back upstairs, evident by the stumbling sounds that escaped from the room. A few minutes passed, and she reappeared with her costume intact, a pair of indigo-colored lights underneath, covering her previously exposed body parts with the exception of her head. Light held her out of arms and posed, as if presenting herself. Hair smiled and nodded, stealing a kiss before she could halt to respond. Smiling as well, Twilight pulled her hood back over her head, haunting Peter to put his mask on properly. His stomach tightened to a knot. Spider-Man was made to make his return. First job was to take back the shield hail carrier. High task, but he offered Twilight and Spike a support thumbs up. Peter knew he had two reasons not to fail. Let's go, you two!